So if you, yes, so, so, so if you want it, if your daughter went into a shower and some man is in there or teenagers in there, male who think that he is a woman, but he's really a man, you would be okay with that? If he's a if he's a woman, I'm going to call him a she. And and yes, I am okay with that. To be cursed with a curse. What does that actually mean? You're about to find out today. Top five signs that you're dealing with a reprobate mind. Let's get it. Now this is a tough topic to tackle for several reasons. One, because I know that there are people who feel like salvation is for everybody. And it's not. I didn't say it. The Bible did. Two, if you're watching this and you do so happen to be in a reprobate mind, you probably won't be able to understand what I'm saying anyway. So for the purpose of this video, let me just say that I'm talking to God's body. And the objective goal of this video is to show you how to recognize when you're dealing with a reprobate mind. Now the clips I'll be showing through this segment will give you some examples of what I'm talking about. As all the clips shown will have some variations of the toxic behavior exhibited by those who are cursed by God. So stick with me. Now when I looked up the definition of reprobate and reprobate mind, I found this. To be reprobate is an unprincipled person. To have a reprobate mind is morally depraved and unprincipled. To be rejected by God without and beyond hope of salvation. Now remember I said earlier in the video that salvation isn't for everybody. So before we begin the video clips, here are the five warning signs that you're dealing with a person in a reprobate mind. Number one, suppressing truth with wickedness. Number two, willfully rejecting God. Number three, offering redirected worship. Number four, having no limits or restrictions on sinful behavior. Number five, demonstrating no desire for change. Now, as we watch in these clips, I want you all to see if y'all can identify some or all of the signs in any of these clips. So you're saying that conservatives are trying to keep the blacks, the homosexuals, the transgenders, the um, um, non-gender uh, folks, they're trying, the conservatives are trying to keep them down? Are you well, saying that? I would that? say certain conservatives. I would say certain conservatives because we do have conservatives within One People's Project. However, you do have those hardliners out there that um, do, in fact, try that. Do, in fact, make it clear that's what they're doing. I mean, we just, conservatives, these particular conservatives literally made a federal case out of who uses what bathroom. Why do you care? It is simply well, somebody just going on with their lives. It's another example of just them not minding their business. Conservatives so, in this case. So Obama was the one did that. The federal government did that. Are you saying that the conservatives should be okay with walking into a bathroom and a man who uh, or a woman who thinks that she's a man is in that bathroom with men or in the shower with men or men in shower with women because they think that they're a woman that the conservatives should just accept that without a fight? Or boys who think that they're girls, they should just accept that and not fight back. It's none of your business. So it it's should be none of your business. If somebody is going to the bathroom, that is your most private area, and you are making it public. We we have conservatives standing outside. This happened just last year. A conservative who, by the way, is not Obama, was standing outside a bathroom door trying to determine are trying to keep people who he considered to be someone who shouldn't be going into that bathroom. They had conservatives doing that. That's what I mean. If you have an issue with it, that's your issue. So if you, yes, so you, so if, you want to, if your daughter went into a shower and some man is in there or teenagers in there, male, who think that he is a woman, but he's really a man, you would be okay with that? If he's a if he's a woman, I'm going to call him a she. And and yes, I am okay with that because Amazing. as long as there aren't any laws being broken, we're good. Amazing. He's going to she's going to the bathroom. 
She's going to the bathroom. No, how about a shower? How about the shower? How about the shower? End of it. How about the shower? You okay with your daughter? Same thing. Can the child see that? How do we get into this space in this world where a man would be okay with a grown man going into the bathroom with his daughter, let alone showering with his daughter? That sounds like depravity to me if I've ever heard it. First of all, if he changed his mind once about going from being a man to a woman, who's to say that in that instance he doesn't change his mind again and go back from wanting to be a woman to a man? I mean, it's common sense. There is absolutely no moral or godly thinking in this behavior. But then again, there's not meant to be any moral behavior in this. Remember what we said, one of the signs is being morally unprincipled. So in this clip, I can point out at least two signs that we're dealing with a person in a reprobate mind. One, he's suppressing the truth with wickedness. And number two, having no limits or restrictions on sinful behavior. Now check this second clip out. What I don't understand, two guys cannot have children, right? Mm -hmm. Or two women can't have children together. Why would they bother getting married? Because it's what they want to do and that's their business and they can't have children together. It's been proven. A man can have a baby? No, he can't have a baby. They can have children. How? They can adopt. Surrogacy. There's several options. Do you not watch TV? But that would be them doing it. It would be they would be going outside of their homosexuality to have a baby, right? To get a baby. If God had wanted them to have get married and have children, would he have made it so that they could do it together without having to go outside of their homosexuality? You know what? I'm not comfortable having these type of religious conversations at all. Why not? You're a Christian. Uh, and I love the Lord, but I won't be demeaned in any type of way when it comes to my spirituality or the spirituality of anybody within the LGBTQ community. You don't have a right to judge them. I don't have a right to judge them. It makes me no difference at all who they choose to love. They're great people. I'm a great person. You may be a great person underneath it all. So people are allowed to love and, and honor and take care of what they want. If they want to marry somebody and have children by somebody or with somebody, they can do that. And God will still love them. If you can't see it, that's completely fine and perfect on your behalf. But you are not the creator. You you are not the end all to be all. There is a there is not a heaven or hell that you can put anybody in. But so you feel offended with the question. Now, do y'all see the anger in this individual? Over a simple question, he becomes simply irate. Now, in this clip, y'all see a guy named Jesse Lee Peterson. He's one of my favorite people to watch because his mood never changes. He doesn't get too high and he doesn't get too low. His facial expression never changes either. So in this clip that y'all have seen, they have had a great conversation to where the guy, Jesse Lee Peterson, he's asking the same questions the same way all the way through. And the guy doesn't have a problem until it comes down to his sexuality and where he stands with God as far as how he believes about sexuality. I'm going to put the link in the description of Jesse Lee Peters' channel. I suggest y'all go watch it. It's really entertaining to see uh, some of the guests he has on the show and how they get angry at him for absolutely no reason. It's just a conversation and a demeanor as though it's something negative or something bad, and it's not. It, does it feel like it's something negative by me asking these things? By you say, the way you're saying it is like making it like a negative thing, and it's not a negative thing. If you believe that, that's fine, but you don't have to address it in such a negative way. So my belief that two guys cannot have a child, is, is it a false belief? But you're saying for them to go outside of their sexuality, right. they're still inside their sexuality. They're just going to have, they're just, bring, they're just having a child. I know, but they have to step outside of that. God didn't make that possible. So why would God have made that possible? So let me if ask you something. Meant for them to get married and all that as a man and as a Christian, why would God have not made that possible for two women or two men not to have to step outside of their homosexuality or les lesbian to have babies? Why would he make it possible for them to stay in that and have a child, have a child or children? People can have children, gay, straight, whoever. They but they to, can't have it. They, they have to have step children. outside to get it. They can have children. But my question is, why wouldn't God have made that possible? Are you leaving? I ain't leaving. Don't go. This is an inappropriate conversation. Now, as I said before, Jesse didn't change his voice. He didn't raise his voice. He didn't curse him out. He said nothing about judging him. He just simply asked a question. But what you see going on here is it makes a person angry simply to have to answer a question. 
And here's another thing. I did a video about knowledge on my channel. And here is yet another example of the dangers of man's knowledge. Now, when Jesse asked this person, can a man have a baby? He clearly answers no, but then goes on to list a, a bevy of options that he can have in order to justify making what's wrong right. And this is the problem with man's knowledge. Man's knowledge is kind of like a big middle finger to God saying that, hey, yeah, you can't have a baby as a man and a man or a woman and a woman, but we'll do in vitro fertilization or you can go adopt a child. And so it, in your mind, is able to justify making what's wrong right. And that's the problem with man's knowledge. We oftentimes want to prove scientifically that we can go against the nature of God and the will of God. So then Jesse follows up by asking him a question. If God wanted a man and a man to have a baby or a woman and a woman to have a baby, then why didn't he allow a way for them to be able to produce it naturally instead of having to step out of the bounds of their natural sexuality, so they say, to do this? Why didn't God allow for this to happen or make it possible for them to do this naturally? Instantly, the reprobate says, I can't be a part of this religious question. He's getting mad. He's getting more fumes saying that Jesse is judging him, saying that it's religious questioning. And that's something I just don't get. How is Jesse being religious here? How is Jesse condemning him? How is Jesse judging him? After all, this man says he loves God and he has a relationship with God. So you're not willing to answer a simple question due to the fact that you love God and you feel like this guy's judging you. And he didn't say anything about heaven or hell. He didn't say how he felt about it. He just asked you a question. See, we live in a world where people have their easy go to. So it's easy to say you're judging me simply by asking me a question. The guy didn't disrespect you or get loud with you, but that's the easy way to deflect. I get it. Look, you want to take the easy way out and say somebody's judging you just because you can't answer the question? I get it. Go ahead. You want to say that this is a religious question, but then go on to say that you love God. So how come you just simply can't answer the question? You want to say you love God, but how can you love God if you don't love his original plan for the man and the woman? the family, and actually his original plan for marriage. Now, I have no doubt that you're serving a God, sir. I just can't let you sit here and say that you're serving the God that I serve or the God of the Bible. So here we can clearly see all five signs of a reprobate mind being displayed, but there's two that individually that I want to focus on. One, offering a redirected worship, saying that you love God, saying that you have a relationship with God, yet you're completely ignoring his standard for your way of life. You're completely ignoring uh, the ordination of what he originally designed as for a man and a woman in marriage. You're completely ignoring all that, yet you say that you love God. You're redirecting worship, and that's one of the things that it says is a sign of a reprobate mind. Two, you're demonstrating no desire for change. Like most of these people have no desire to hear anything that will cause them to have to reflect on their lifestyle or have to deal with the fact that what they're doing is just wrong. Look, I get it. It's hard for some of us to admit this because many of us might be dealing with a family member who's going through this same issue. We might have a family member or a loved one or a co-worker or somebody near and dear to us that is dealing with this same thing. And to us, they're good people. But well, once again, that old adage comes up to good don't make you godly. One of the biggest tricks of the enemy is to afflict one of your family members or loved ones or co-workers with one of these diseases or one of these reprobate minds. And Satan is banking on your love for the flesh to overwrite your love for the spirit of Christ. Well, let's go to the Bible and see what the Bible tells us to do about this. In Luke 14 and 26, it reads, if any man comes to me, and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and yes, even his own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And I know there are those that are watching who will say, what does God mean by hate? I keep telling y'all, hate from God is not the emotion that we experience as people. He simply means translated, if you cannot deny those who are not willing to take up their cross, who are not willing to be following God, which many of us who are watching this know that when you came on God's side, there were a lot of people that weren't really willing to travel that road with you. So if you're dealing with a family member who is dealing with one of these afflictions, who is dealing with one of these troubles and struggles, and they're in a reprobate mind, you're going to have to be willing to 
cut them off. You're going to have to be willing to deny them, whether it's your mother, whether it's your father, whether it's your wife, children, and even yourself. God goes down to the minuscule detail that you got to hate your old life. You got to hate the sin that you do. You got to be able to deny yourself. If you can't do that, then you just simply cannot be his disciple. We must understand as believers that God requires this of us in order to be on his side. Once we enter into a covenant with God, we have a new family. This is why in the Bible, Jesus is having a meeting one time and his mother and brother are at the door and they try to interrupt Jesus' meeting and say, hey, your mother and brother are here. And he simply replies, who is my brother? Who is my mother? If they're not in this meeting with me, if they're not following Christ or doing the work of the Lord, guess what? I'm willing to deny them because right now I'm doing the Lord's work. And this is what we're all going to have to do. And this is what Jesus requires of us. Everybody's going to have to take up their own cross. You simply don't get to be on this side and not have to go through anything, not have to go through the hurt of maybe cutting off a family member simply because they want to live a different lifestyle. Now, this last clip I'm about to play speaks for itself. It's going to exhibit a lot of these signs that I'm showing you. This is an atheist questioning Dr. Turek about why God does what he does. Now, you'll notice that he tries to pin this guy down and to a yes or no answer. But simply, you cannot do that with God. God is God. He cannot accept that God is God. Check it out. God commanded you to murder your wife or children to prove your faith in God. Is your current devotion not enough to prove your faith? Must you murder your children as Abraham was instructed? This First is of all, a, I don't know this, what this, I would this, do. This is, this is a simple yes or no question, Doc. I don't, I don't know what I would do in Abraham's position. That's a good question. You know who really struggled with that? Soren Kierkegaard, who wrote a book called... Um, is your faith strong enough to murder your own on, children Cody, or, Cody, or wife? I'm thinking, and since I'm from New Jersey, it's really hard for me to do. So give me a minute. <laughs> Uh, the word, the, the, the book is called Fear and Trembling by Soren Kierkegaard. So I don't know what I would do. Just like I'm never going to say if somebody put a gun to my head or a gun to my wife's head, what would you do? Because Peter tried that. I'll never deny you, Lord. And what did he do? He denied, he denied him three denied. times. Yes. Yeah. At the so crucifixion. I don't know what I would do. Okay. But let me point out, if your friend is an atheist, there's nothing wrong with God doing anything because by atheism, there's no standard of right and wrong anyway. So in order for you to bring up the objection, you're actually stealing a standard from God in order to try and say God doesn't exist. Dr. Shrek, I'm only asking if you would murder your wife or children to prove your devotion. It's a simple question. I don't know what would happen. And by the way, when God decides that someone should die, it's not murder for him because God kills all of us at some point. And he's the only one that can resurrect us. So we don't have the right to murder people, but God has the right to kill people anytime he wants. He can strike me down today, tomorrow, anytime he wants, and it's completely in his prerogative. God has the right to slaughter the Amalekites down to the last man, woman, and child. God has the right to take us out anytime we want, because if Christianity is true, men don't really die, we just change location. And God can do that anytime you're, he wants. So you're, thank you're, you for your you're, question. You're... <laughs> it, is, it, 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 it is stunning to me that massacre and genocide gets applauded in this building. Now you gotta understand that when a person is in a reprobate, a lot of times they hate God. They don't like God and they don't understand God. So once again, like my video said earlier on my page that you can find on my page, a lot of times these people are looking for answers and when they can't find them it causes them to be angry maybe somebody hurt them before maybe the church hurt them before maybe they have religious family members that have condemned them or made them feel bad so us as believers have to learn to be patient and then we also have to use the spirit to discern when you're dealing with this because the reprobate mind in the bible is is given unto them by god he gives them over to the desires of their flesh he gives them over to this lifestyle it's not god actually putting a curse on you you've just been playing with that thing so long that he gives you over to what you actually want similar to what i tell people about hell god is not actually sending you sending you to hell he's just giving you over to what you already chose to do so instead of looking at god with hate you should say that hey he loves me so much that he gives me the desires of my heart you understand what i'm saying five signs that you're dealing with a reprobate mind i'm gonna leave you with this clip but until next time y'all be blessed you're making us pay for water you son of a you're making us pay for grass.
traits, apples, things that God gave us for free.